All right, y'all. So this is a requested um, video from a member of the Quick Start group. I do just want to let y'all know that if you do have any specific concerns or things that you want to know about that are, you know, um, related to Press On Nails and the Press On Nails business, you're more than welcome to shoot me um, like an email or something. And I'm trying to, excuse me y'all while I'm trying to <laughs> adjust things or whatever, but you could always like shoot me an email or even if you need to just put it in the group and say what it is that you would like to know about and I will make it happen for you if it's something that I can um, help you with, if it's a topic that I know about. But this is something that I have not personally gotten a chance to do this year. I live in a small town, so literally every event that I signed up for to do a pop-up event or a vendor event was canceled this year. And um, yeah, that sucks for me, but I have attended vendor events before as a seller, once by myself and a couple other times with other people in my family who you know sell products or with a friend that sells products, family friend. Same thing for me. But anyway, this is about um, press-ons at the pop-up. So I hope you guys enjoy this and are able to get something from it. You know, I wanted to jazz it up a little bit and make a little presentation. So here we go. Um, making profit at the pop-up shop, that's the most important thing. We don't want to just be out here, you know, going to pop-ups just to say that we did it. Or because it's like, you know, the popular thing on social media, we want to make money. So making profit at the pop-up shop is more so what we're talking about here. We'll discuss what a pop-up exactly is, the cost and opportunities, the pros and cons, and the do's and the don'ts. Of course, you know, you can find me on the socials at Press Queen Nikki. That's my name on YouTube. Press Queen Nikki is me on um, Twitter, and it's also me on Instagram logo you know presented by press queen <laughs> now a pop-up shop is basically the same thing as a vendor event that's why i was using the terms interchangeably right there in um our brief intro the only differences are that a pop-up is more like you know it's the catchy phrase or it's the thing to do it's the type of event like um eight nine ten years ago day parties were the thing now it's like pop-up shops are the thing, especially if you're in urban areas or big like megatropolis cities. But pop-ups are more something that attracts like, you know, younger urban crowds, the more millennial generation Z types are what you're gonna find at a pop-up. And it's usually at a smaller venue, like it could be at in the parking lot, like a boutique's parking lot, or it could actually actually be in someone's store but it's usually smaller venues. Then when you have what we consider a vendor event, it could be like, you know, large regional festivals, um, things that they may have downtown in your city. A vendor event, um, the demographics are gonna vary depending on your location. I'm in a smaller town, so I have more of a rural audience. If I'm going to vendor events, these are people that are like from like smaller towns and surrounding areas. So, um, yeah, it's like more location based with a vendor event festivals, um, things that happen like annually in your city, whatever your city is known for. Like I'm in the Azalea city, so they have the Azalea festival every year. That's a vendor event. Um, people, you know, they have other attractions and things, you know, to showcase the area and the state and whatnot. But it's also still a vendor event. You can still set up and sell your products here. So when you hear um, pop up shop, just know that it's talking about a vendor event. It's just more, you know, an updated terminology. And vendor events usually have larger venues. Like I said, they can take up all of downtown. They can be inside of like a whole conference center, those type of things. But yeah, vendor event and pop up shop is still basically the same thing. Now, cost. There are costs to attending a pop-up shop as a seller because it takes money to make money and you're paying for access to a large audience of potential shoppers. These are people that you may not have reached otherwise and you have them all together in one place with your products right there in front of them 
that you can sell to right there on the spot. So that's why you're paying the cost of attending a pop-up shop as a vendor. That was my daughter that just walked through in the background with her pippy long stock in here. <laughs> but um, yeah, larger audience, people all together, and especially if it's a pop-up that's, um, like, like I said, millennial generation Z, more of your audience for, you know, luxury press on nails, or if you have an audience of, you know, um, Generation X or boomers even that wear luxury press ons, then vendor events or whatever you'll still have to pay for. And the cost to you are going to be um, what they either call a booth fee or a vendor fee, which is basically buying your spot and the more desirable areas, like right there when you first come through the door, those are usually more expensive than something that's like in the back by the bathroom. You know, those spots are going to be less expensive. So it's just a matter of what your budget is and what you want to spend to showcase your products. If you're really into positioning, then you're probably going to spend more to be in like prime real estate to be in the, the place that's closest to the door or the place that's closest to the food. So a lot of people gather there. You're going to pay more for that at a pop up or vendor event wherever you go to. Also, just the cost of, you know, getting tablecloths for your tables. You may have to supply your own tables. Every pop up doesn't supply the tables for you. So you may have to like rent an event table. Y'all, I just threw this video together late night on a Friday night. So when you hear noises in the background, that's just real life happening. <laughs> but um, yeah, those are pretty much the cost of everything. Your branding materials, if you want to make like promotional pins or, um, you know, little cute little rubber bracelets that you see people give out at vendor events. All of those things are going to cost you. So just keep that in mind when you're attending a pop up It's not free. Unless you know the person that's, you know, hosting the pop up or you host it yourself. And that's a whole nother video that I can't do for you because I've never hosted a pop up. <laughs> now, diligence is the mother of good luck. That's a quote by Benjamin Franklin. And I put that in here because when we're talking about costs and stuff, you want to make sure that you're paying the right person. You want to make sure that you're actually um, giving your money to the right person. And these days, with everything being based on social media, it's real easy for somebody to put a flyer up on their social media, say, this is the pop up I'm having. Send me fifty dollars for your booth fee and have 10, 11, 12 people send them fifty dollars. So, boom, they out of there with five hundred, six hundred dollars. And there's really no real pop up. You don't want that to happen to you because it is scam central out here in 2020 and it does happen. So just. Do your, your due diligence, you know, use social proof to find out who's in charge. Like um, if you see a pop up, usually there's going to be some social media contact information on the flyer or in the caption. Click on everyone's name. Hit Google. After you look through social media, look up this person. Look on their timelines, see if they do pop ups before, if this is their first one, if they have any photos that they are in that are tagged with other business owners. Go check out those business pages and see what they had to say about the pop up or if they have any photos from the pop up that happened previously, because usually um, people don't just well, a lot of people are starting to do pop ups, but if somebody is throwing the actual pop up. Nine times out of 10 is not going to be their first time unless they're the actual business owner. But if this is a host that you're going through, like some type of like maybe a, a, an influencer or a local celebrity, just kind of check their things out and make sure that they've done it before. If they're the ones hosting the pop up, if it is a business that's hosting the pop up, then there will be more times when it is their first time. And you'll just have to look for other evidence that says that it's legit. You know, look at other businesses, see if other people are commenting, talking about, you know, being excited about putting their products in there. Another thing that happened, um, one of the events that I was scheduled to attend this year, we um, had a group. It was like a Facebook group chat thing kind of going on with all of us. And that's how we stayed abreast of the new developments and, you know, changes in the dates up until ultimately it was postponed. But everything before that was kind of... Um, 
share it with us in the group. So there will be, basically you will have assurance. When it's a real pop-up happening before you pay your fee, you will definitely have that assurance and that social proof that is, you know, legit. And make sure you check out the venue also, because I will not attend a pop-up that is in like a ratchet or a hood neighborhood. That's just not my people. My people who I um, advertise to, they wouldn't be there. So there's no point in me attending that pop-up. So just make sure you're checking out the venue also. And you're going to spend less money if you attend a pop-up that's closer to you. If you live in a small city, that's going to limit your options like it does for me, unless you're willing to drive a long way to attend a bigger pop-up. If there's going to be a lot of people there, like if there's like a special guest or a celebrity or something that's hosting it or making a walkthrough, it's going to be worth it. But if you're just going, you know, driving a long way just to attend a pop-up by any old, you know, Tom, Dick or Harry, I wouldn't do it personally. I would find something more local. All right, so what makes pop-ups so special? Well, the thing about pop-ups is that um, anytime you're able to get your products directly in front of an audience of shoppers, that's good. That's the next best thing you can do other than you know having your own brick and mortar store. So you're gonna save on shipping costs because you can um, deliver your products right there. You know, they can just buy it from you. So you don't have to pay the extra three to $10 to ship, depending on what method of shipping you use. So that's putting more money in your pocket. You also get social proof from pop-ups and that equals credibility. So when people see you out there with your business and your products, you are actively interacting with the public. They know that you're legit. They know that you're really doing this. And that kind of takes away, um, any questions about, well, is this person a scammer? Because if you're just selling on social media or you're just selling online and people don't really know you and you're just starting, you're not that big, you know, people are really cautious about who they send their money to these days. So you want to have credibility and you can get that by showcasing yourself at a pop up, taking a lot of pictures, doing, you know, lives while you're there, posting stories while you're there, taking pictures with customers you know, having people give their testimonial. You could just get a lot of social proof and that gives you credibility at a pop-up. Also loyal customers, when you sell to someone and it's face-to-face and y'all share energy, you know what I'm saying? Y'all have that energetic exchange, them giving you money, you giving them something that they really want or really like. Um, Just having that personal touch with the person, being able to actually touch them, you know, hug them or just stand close to them for a picture. That it makes a difference psychologically. It makes a difference. Those people are more likely to continue buying from you. So pop ups is a great opportunity to build a more loyal fan base and have those recurring customers. And that's where businesses really, you know, that's where they get their money from. New customer acquisition is expensive. That's the cost. Like the cost you would pay to attend a pop up shop is. You know, that's your new customer acquisition. That all goes into the cost of acquiring new customers. But once you have those customers and you just keep them satisfied, just keep checking in with them with emails and stuff and keep dropping new inventory, making new sets, that's a customer that you've already spent money to acquire. So any sales that you make from them past that initial sale, that's just, you know, extra on top of it. And so you want to keep those new customers, those loyal customers coming in and pop-up shops is a great way to do that. Now, we talked about the cost and these right here, you know, these are opportunities that come from the pop-up. Let's talk about the pros, okay? Now, pros of attending pop-ups, exposure, email signups, content. These are the big three for me. Exposure, face-to-face recognition, people getting to know who you are, which is really important because the way social media is going with a flood of new entrepreneurs, just having a business isn't enough now. You have to be like a lifestyle brand or a personality. You have to be pretty much your own media company. So just getting your face out there, letting people know who you are and showing that you're active with what you're doing and that you work in. Sometimes people buy from you not because of who you are, but because of your hustle 
they just like to see you out here, you know, doing it. If you go to a pop up and you're the only person in there with luxury press on nails, they're gonna be like, oh, that's so neat. That's, you know, people will be drawn to you. And any way that you can get your face out there in a positive way is good when it's attached to your business. So exposure, definitely. Email signups, the money is in the list. So when you're out there, you can have you can go old fashioned and print some regular printing paper with some lines on it. You don't even have to have the lines printed on it. Put some printing paper out there and tell people to write their email or you can do it more, you know, technologically advanced and you can be taking emails and signing people up right there on the spot. It's up to you, however you want to do it, but collect emails. That's a big benefit of pop-ups that a lot of people I feel don't take advantage of. They don't collect emails and while they're right there with you, why not? So if you just have to have them go on your website and type in their email and go on your and get on your list right there in front of you, do it. Like if you have the time and you can give people that individual attention, which you more than likely will be able to at a pop-up, yeah, talk to that person, have them open their phone because everybody has their phone on them, have them go online, go to your website, sign up for your email list right there in front of you. And, you know, if you have to let them get a discount, like when people go to my website, it says you get five dollars off your first order when you sign up for my email list. If somebody comes up to me to pop up and they sign up right there, I'll take five dollars off of their order right there on the spot. And they can still have that five dollar coupon emailed to them to use on my website at a later date. So that means they get a good deal, a great first impression, and, you know, they're on my email list and they get to use their code. So they'll be become a repeat customer. And the more you train somebody to keep buying from you, they'll eventually get it and they'll keep going with the habit. You just become their go to person. That's just how sales works. So get the emails while you're there at the pop up and content. Like I just said, like um, selling is not really enough anymore. You have to get your face out there and you have to let people see you and what you're doing and what you're about. They want to know who is it. People just like a good story these days. Everything is so boring. People want a good story. So get plenty of pictures and video clips. Make sure you hashtag it. If the pop up itself has a hashtag, use the hashtag. If the um, post or a special guest is going to be there, use hashtags. Whoever is promoting the event, whatever hashtags they're using, use those hashtags when you post your pictures and videos. And if you have your own hashtag, use those. But definitely get very social with everything. Take pictures, use that social proof, put it up online, use it to promote yourself. It's good content. Now, there are always cons, so we're going to go over the big three of the cons, too. Time consuming is not for loners and you will require an upfront investment. Now, time consuming. If you're somebody who struggles with consistency, and I feel you on this, so there's no judgment here. If you're someone who struggles with consistency or you have bad time management, pop-ups may not be the thing for you because it does take a lot of preparation. All the time going into planning, how you're going to place everything, planning what things you're going to take there, um, planning how your approach to sales will be. You'll need to be running errands, hitting the Dollar Tree back and forth. You'll probably go to Dollar Tree about four or five times over the course of setting up for a pop up, including the day of. You're probably going to be running to Dollar Tree and running errands to get the last minute things. So it is time consuming. And that segues into our next point, which is that it's not for loners. If you're there setting up at the pop up the day of and you need a different color tablecloth. Are you really going to leave the pop up to go to Dollar Tree? Or is it better to have assistance? It's definitely better to have assistance. Um, if you're antisocial, it's not for you. Pop-ups are not for you if you're antisocial. I'm not going to sit here and BS you. I'm not going to run you around the bush with that. You know, introverts can do anything. I'm not going to play with your time like that because honestly, if you go to a pop-up and you're anti, you're not going to make no money. You're not going to make any money. I don't care how nice your product is. People be like, oh, that's cute. And they'll keep walking 
because you're not engaging them. You have to be up and you have to be engaging people. So being with a team of folks or being with a, a bestie or a partner is going to make you feel more comfortable and that's going to open you up to talk to people more. If you've ever been somewhere and you were by yourself and it makes you be shut off and you, you were real antisocial or have social anxiety or whatever it is, pop-ups are not for you. So um, it's, it's not for loners <laughs> or the anti, which I should have put up here. It's not for the anti either. You will need help. And not even just for that aspect or for running errands. You know, when let's say that there is a certain part, point of the pop-up shop where it's like a, a rush of people and it's at the thickest, it's at capacity. A lot of people show up. You have a lot of people at your booth, God willing. It, it can be overwhelming if you have to talk to all of those people by yourself. So having help, having assistance, even if it's somebody who you can just point to and say, OK, give them that, give them this product, give them that product. If you have somebody bagging up their products for them, that'll be cool. But assistance is a must when you're doing a pop up. A con well, the last big con is the upfront investment. There are absolutely no guarantees that you'll make money. You can put in, let's say the booth fee is like $50 and it could be much more than that. Just I'm just saying like that's as for an example, let's say the booth fee is like $50. You buy new inventory to sell. You buy a table to set up with. You get all these fixings. You have your branded stuff. You have your pins. You have your little bracelets. You have little notepads and stuff that they can take as freebies so that they can remember your brand. Come the day of the pop-up shop, the venue goes up in flames. They may give you your vending feedback. But all that money you spent on inventory, you're going to have to stand on that, sis, <laughs> or you're going to have to sell it some other way. Um, all those promotional items you don't bought, you're going to have to use those and still make a way to give them out or find a way to give them out or, you know, make them useful, make it worth the money. Let's say you get there to the pop up and don't nobody show up. <laughs> no one shows up. You know, it's a very big possibility. We're here um, in the still kind of going through and in the aftermath of COVID-19, people talk a big game on social media. They can say, oh, I'm going to be at the pop-up. We have so many people coming. It'll be tons of vendors. It's going to be so lit. So-and-so going through, do a walkthrough. And the day of, don't nobody show up. You and a couple other, other vendors are out there set up and there are no patrons. There are no consumers. There is no audience. And whoever the promoter said was going to show up, to do a walkthrough, they don't do it. You don't spend that money already. So there's no guarantees. That's a con of a pop-up. It is an upfront investment. So just make sure that you do that due diligence, that you don't overextend yourself buying inventory. And it's okay to sell out. It's okay to sell out at a pop-up. Only you know the type of volume and how hot your item is. Only you know how your sales work. So, you know, if you want to overbuy inventory so that you don't sell out, that's cool. But if you sell out, OK, pack it up. Time to go home or stand around and take pre-orders. We'll talk about that more. Now, most of the people at a pop up are looking for unique products that they can't find in stores. You will not find salon quality nails that you can apply yourself in a store. You're going to find the plastic flimsy ones. So press on nails are a great item and they're lightweight. You know, they don't cost a whole lot to make or to put together. They're just kind of, you know, time consuming, as y'all know already. But luxury press ons are a great item for pop up shops. So if you find a good pop up, you know, you, you're going to want to go there. It's a good place to go. It's a good item that people like to pick up at the spur of the moment. They may have just bought a fire outfit at the pop-up and they walk past your table and they see some nails that go with the outfit. Boom, another sale. So luxury press-ons are good for the pop-up. Now we have our do's and don'ts. Brand, 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 brand. I talked about promotional items already, but I mean, you want to have stickers. 
You want to have bags to put their products in. You want to have a banner that goes across the front of the table. You want to have little, you know, ever seen those little tabletop signs? Kind of like when you're being seated, like at a wedding or something, you want to have tabletop signs that have your brand or that have pictures of your um, products or that have your social media information. You just want to have your brand loud, big and proud. When people even look in your direction at a pop up shop, they should be able to see your booth sticking out. Don't just have a plain white fold out table with your products kind of just laid out willy nilly and hope somebody's going to want to come over there. You got to make it a party. You have to get balloons with your brand colors, ribbons with your brand colors, confetti with your brand colors, flowers even with your um with your brand colors. You just really want to liven it up. Make it look like somewhere that people want to be and you'll attract customers. And engage, engage, engage. Like I said, you can't be anti you cannot be an antisocial person at a pop-up and expect to make money. And the whole purpose of this presentation is talking about making a profit at a pop-up. So if you want to make money, you have to get out there. You have to speak to people. Personally, I'm more of an, a direct sales type person than I am social media. That's why if you noticed, <laughs> I don't, I'm not like, I'm, I'm getting there. I am working on it, but there, there are some gaps. If you go and look at Press Queen Nails or Press Queen Collection on social media, there's some gaps. I'm more of a direct salesperson. So pop-ups and stuff like that, that's that's my playground. That's what I'm good at. If I meet somebody in person, y'all, just be honest, I'm a hustler. I could sell you this air. <laughs> like I can do that in person. On social media, I'm more of I'm outgoing, but I'm private. So Social media is still new territory for me, even though it's been around for so long now, since like I was in high school now, it's still promoting on social media still feels foreign to me. I have to get over that. It's that urge or that that voice inside of the back of my mind that always asks me, is that what you really mean or are you doing this for clout? <laughs> but I digress. Um, just engage. OK, just engage when you get in front of people, talk to them. You know, ask them about their day and everything doesn't have to be a hard sell. If somebody's walking past you and you like their shoes. Oh, girl, I like those shoes. Where'd you get them from? Oh, really? They're selling them over here. OK, I may have to go and see about them myself when I leave my booth. Um, you looking for, you know, any press on, <laughs> you know, just kind of segue into it. You can have regular conversations with people and make sales that way. Just be engaging. That's really the first step towards sales, just engaging people. You don't have to worry about, okay, what am I going to say to them? Just have a regular conversation. It'll come up. You standing in front of this big branded table with balloons and ribbons and glitter and free promotional items and press on nails and stuff. They're not going to not mention it. You know, you're it's already there. The branding is speaking for you. So all you have to do is be the brand identity. Once they like you, more than likely they'll buy from you. Now, these are the don'ts. And you see that big one, freebies. Mm -mm. Those promotional items, I'm not talking about those. So the promo items is excluded from this. But giving out free product, <laughs> don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. You are lowering your value in their eyes, and it kind of reeks of desperation. So we don't give free items. We don't do nothing for the free. That $5 off coupon, that's about, you know, that's about it in terms of money off and discounts and whatnot. You can get a double discount, one in person and one to use on my website. That's it. That's all the giving I got for you. Anything after that, you're going to have to pay me. <laughs> so we don't give freebies, no freebies at the pop up. OK, none whatsoever. Because they'll go tell somebody else and then before you know it, you have 10 people standing around your booth thinking they're about to get something free. Now you lose the money at the pop up. <laughs> OK. And um, no sitting, no sitting. Sitting is how to disengage people. If you're at a pop up, if you're at any vending event, any type of sales and you're sitting down, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because it just looks like a more complacent, passive position when you're standing up and you have presence that draws people to you. 
it draws people to you. It makes you more exciting just on a psychological level, like more subconsciously standing up is going to give you confidence. You'll be able to talk to more people. Um, you'll be just more relaxed. You stand your ground. You just look more official when you're standing. So stand up and talk to people. And you never want to be in a position where people are coming to talk to you and you looking up at them like that because it just makes Again, subconsciously, it just kind of sends a signal that they're above you and you're down here and you out here trying to hustle up some money and woe is me. I need the money. So I'm here rather than I'm here with my brand, you know, come experience this. It's just two different levels and you want to be on that higher level where you invite people in. So no sitting and give your phone a break. This is where the help comes in, the assistance, having a bestie there, having partners there, having family there to help you so that they can take pictures and video. Like if you really, really ready, if you really prepared, you'll have somebody there whose only job is just to take pictures and videos, have somebody to help you bag up the goods, have somebody who can, you know, help you with sales. A four person team would be ideal. But if you don't have that, have somebody who can take pictures for you and do videos for you. And I will let you know, sometimes they only allow one other person to be at your table. Some pop-up events won't allow you to have like three or four people to help you or, you know, three people to help you plus you. So you can't have that four person dream team at every event. But if they do have limits, at least have another person with you so that they can take pictures and help you out. So that you're not on your phone all day, that you can stand up and be present and engage with people. Now, finding pop-ups near you. We're going to go over here and take a little field trip to social media. We're going to do Facebook first. This is my own personal Facebook. This is my actual Facebook. So what am I trying to find here? I need to go to the events. You go to Facebook events. I don't really find a lot of pop-ups on Facebook. It's more so the vendor events that I was talking about earlier, um, more regional festivals, carnivals, you know, see like trucks going wild and whatnot. And if you look over here, upcoming events, these are things that I already had planned. Well, no, the, the weapons carry I just signed up for, but that greater purpose summit because of the type of women that I advertised to, something like that would have been a great vendor event, but it was postponed from this summer all the way until March of next year. And the one right under it, the mother daughter brunch has a big postponed sign here. So that's way into next year. That's something that would have been this summer also. Those are vendor events that I was signed up to go to and they were postponed. So unfortunately I didn't have any footage to share of those with y'all today, but you know, you go to this Facebook event and just look around. Let's see, you can browse events by they have art events and they have fitness events, food events, um, music, networking, nightlife. You go through and you find what's good for you. Let's see, this weekend or this week, ideally you're going to want to, you know, just kind of scroll through Facebook events and find things in enough time where it doesn't overwhelm you. Dang, it took a long, a long time to load, didn't it? <laughs> like I don't have 5G. But yeah, see a fall festival here. That's tomorrow. So no. So yeah, you want to find it, um, you know, further out. You don't want to get it too, too close. You want to be on here looking and looking as far out as you can get. That way, if they need um, vendors to sign up first, you'll be able to contact someone and get information about how you can become a vendor. So all of these, this is this weekend. Look, yep, we can search in November and see what's going on. See, farmers markets, stuff like that, that's more like a regional vendor event that's going to have a different, whole different type of crowd than a pop-up would have. But now that you kind of know how to move around, um, 
yeah, now that you know kind of how to move around on Facebook events, Instagram, that's really where you're going to find the pop-up action at. Like if you're specifically looking for pop-up, not just a any type of vendor event, Instagram is going to be your place. Use this good old search, pop-up shop. Now that has a lot of things. What I would advise you to do is go regional. I'm going to use, of course, pop-up shop ATL because I live in Georgia, even though I'm actually closer to Florida than I am to Atlanta. But yeah, if you look at, if you type in the hashtag pop-up shop Atlanta, just go until you find, boom, go until you find some flyers. And then when you find a flyer and if it still has something about being a vendor on it, even better. So this is saying RSVP, but yeah, I don't see anything about signing up. But for this example, you would go to this shop, IMI or whatever it is, and, you know, see if they have any posts about looking for vendors. Pop-up shop and day party, boom, in Atlanta, Georgia. So these already have the um, the vendors already tagged at the bottom. If you were just doing research, you could go look at all of their pages and see what they're saying about the pop-up, then click on this page and see if they have any other events that are on their page. You know, just do your due diligence and really look around. Let's see, pop-up shop Houston. Let me see. Since we're talking about... um regional searches for pop-ups yeah i'm sure it's not just atlanta i know it wasn't just atlanta <laughs> so yeah just go up here and you look around this one october 17th so that's this weekend that's the 25th and a lot of them will be just advertising the pop-up itself but if you look long enough and you're constantly on the search to find these events, you will find the flyers that say, you know, vendors wanted. Let me type that in and see if it's. Oh, I see vendors wanted ATL. But yeah, see, something like this, because this looks like a company or something that, mm hmm. They do like a tour, so they have dates. When they do stuff like that, then you're going to want to reach out to them. And they're now accepting vendors for upcoming events. The link is in their bio. So, I mean, just like that, you can find these events. Hashtag vendors wanted. Hashtag vendors wanted plus your area. We're going to look at vendors wanted ATL. The first one we just looked at, vendors wanted. Mm -hmm. Black Girl Soul, ATL Meetup, Money on Black Business. Look, <laughs> look, Harvest Market Festival. Look at all of these things that you can get involved in. So if you are going to be driving to a nearby big city or if you want to, um, you know, just find something that's in your city, if you already live in a big city. Let me see. See, that only had. 17 for Tallahassee and none, which I'll look at, even if it's a low number, just look at what they have. Just look at what they have. You never know. Yeah, Tallahassee is not that big. <laughs> Pop up, because these are all places that are actually closer than Atlanta to me. Pop up shop, Jacksonville, that only have hey, Jacks. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Duval. I'm surprised. You just have to play around with the search. Just play around with the search button. Search pop up shops, pop up shop, pop up ATL, pop up wherever you are. Vendors want it. There ain't a lot in Jacksonville either. Yeah. It probably ain't going to be too many pop-ups in Jacksonville. <laughs> Jacksonville is very ratchet. But 
Anyway, I'm sure Orlando has some. Let me see. Pop up shops. Orlando. Hmm, they have a few. Bigger cities, of course, are going to have more. So just, you know, look around. Look around. Even put in your own city. If you live in a small town, even put in your own city. Secure the bag. Okay, some of these are old. So just make sure you check the dates. Again, that's all a part of due diligence. And that's how you kind of do your research on finding a pop-up. It's kind of that simple. Some extra additional tips so that you can make money at a pop-up are to accept mobile pay, Cash App, Venmo, or get one of those little card swipers that you can swipe their card and use it with your phone from Square, I believe. But mobile pay, that's going to be the wave. A lot of people, well, that is the wave. A lot of people not really carrying cash on them like that. And you don't want to have a lot of cash on you at an event where you're kind of open and out with the public anyway. Especially if you didn't do your due diligence on the venue and people in that neighborhood be getting robbed. <laughs> you're going to want to not have cash on you. Now, I said I was going to talk about pre-orders. You want to make sure that if you run out of inventory right there on the spot and you start just taking orders for extra stuff, you want to make sure that it's on hand only. And when I say on hand, I don't mean like actually right there on your person because that means you wouldn't be sold out. When I say on hand, I mean that you have it at the house. You can go put your hand on it or you already have the materials at home. You can go make this set of nails. I don't mean you take their order today and take their money today and then use their money to go buy it. We're not doing the kind of janky drop ship thing with the pop up. You either have it or you don't with the pop up. And if you don't have it right there on the spot at the pop up, but you have it at home or at your warehouse, then it's cool to go ahead and take orders because then you can either put their shipment in the mail the very next day or that afternoon, or you can actually um, deliver it to them later or have them come and pick it up from whatever, wherever you want them to come pick it up from. So, you know, you can do it that way. But yes, you can take pre-orders at a pop-up. You're also going to want to have some protection, anything greater than or equal to pepper spray. <laughs> you see this picture of a slingshot here. Anything that you could hurt someone back if they're trying to hurt you, you're going to want to have some type of protection. Of course, ideally, you're licensed to carry and you got that iron on you, ideally. But anything, just don't be out here naked. Don't be out here naked, B. Keep you some pepper spray, um, a taser, whatever the case may be. Nice little plug. I do sell them on keychains on PressQueenCollection.com. So get yours. <laughs> and you're going to want to dress well. Dress well. As long as you have comfortable shoes, you can be as flamboyant as you want to be. Because like I said, you want to draw a bunch of attention to yourself. Your area of the pop-up shop should be the most popping area of the pop-up shop. And that includes what you're wearing. So wear something cute. Let your outfit match your nails. I mean, if you really want to do it up and you have the team that can man your booth, have an outfit change. Start the pop-up wearing something that have the nails to go to it. End the pop-up wearing something else with the nails to go to it. Just whatever you can do. Like I said, people don't want just the product anymore. They want to buy the experience. They want to buy into you. So whatever you can do to kind of spice things up and make yourself stand out and engage people more and get them to really pay attention to you, you will make money. OK, so um, that is pretty much everything that I have. And I thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. And just remember that if you have anything else that you have questions about, just let me know. Um, leave a comment if I put this on YouTube, wherever I post this at, there's a way to get in contact with me. So <laughs> contact me or leave a comment, a like. Um, shoot me an email wherever you see it at just thank you for watching and if you have anything else that you want to learn about press ons and the press on nail business let me know and i'll try my best to help all right thank you for watching bye